Hey folks, this is Red Falcon, and in this video I'm going to talk about rule number three, block third-party content. So to review, uh, in this video we're going to explain uh, what this actually means by block third-party content. We're also going to demonstrate a couple of examples and discuss the pros and cons. So let's start off with, well, what is third-party content? So basically a website in itself consists of several elements and they're not always from the same place. So the first party content would be the information from the website, which is right here. And that can be anything that the content from the website. So like uh, if you're reading a blog, that could be the contents of a blog or a news article or, or something. So that's coming from the web server and that's what we consider first party content third party content are all those little extras so for example um, this website might be using an ad service and these ads will show up right there this isn't hosted on the primary web server it's actually hosted on its own um, cluster of servers so these aren't actually coming from the website also social media plugins those uh, like buttons post to Twitter, all that stuff. Um, those are just plugins that show up on the site. So that's not actually part of the first um, party content. And uh, basically any other type of plugin. Uh, these can be videos, scripts, I mean, you name it. It's, it could be literally anything else that's not hosted um, on the uh, first party server. Uh, Google Analytics is an example of this. So how could this be dangerous? Well, let's start with ads. Um, one thing, um, ad services are a privacy violation because these ad networks track where you go and what you do. So they can deliver um, customized ads. This is why when you buy something on Amazon and then you go to another website, completely different website, you'll see ads that show things that you recently bought on Amazon or things you were looking at, at on Amazon. So tracking is one of the big issues. Um, the other one is this thing called malvertising. So malvertising is delivering malware, which is malicious software, through ads. Now this could be a completely legit website. Um, so this web server might be a legitimate website that, you know, is trusted and, you know, has been vetted, but the ads on that site might not be. And these sites might contain um, malware um, and all kinds of nasty stuff. Also, social media. Like ads, um, this is another form of tracking. Now, if you don't care about the tracking, that's completely fine. Some people don't. But if this is something that bothers you, um, blocking third-party content would stop um, like Facebook from tracking where you're going and delivering ads in Facebook based on the content that you visited. So other plugins, um, they could just be malicious. It could just be malware lurking on these plugins. Um, because these aren't hosted on the web server, the uh, web admin doesn't have any control over um, what content comes in through these plugins. About all they can do is choose to um, allow these plugins or not. So you're probably asking yourself, well, what are the pros and cons of blocking this content? Well, we'll start off with the, um, the pros. So blocking this content um, will actually block all those annoying ads that you see, the uh, full video ads, the audio ads, the, um, the ads where you highlight, you, you mouse over a piece of uh, a highlight text and it like brings up this little sub menu, really annoying stuff. This will actually block all that. It also helps prevent website malware, like I mentioned before, um, either through advertising or other um, malicious or outdated plugins on the website. And it also helps prevent tracking. Um, so if you're the type of person that doesn't want um, Google or Amazon or Facebook to know, you know, and the advertisers to know what you've been doing and what you've been buying, this is an option for you. However, I do have to um, warn you on a few things, the cons. Um, ads generate revenue for websites. So if you block the ads from websites, 
um, those websites will not be earning revenue um, when you visit the sites. However, if you look at it one way, these ad, these companies um, should do a better job of um, vetting their advertisers, um, making the advertisements less annoying. However, on the flip side of that is some of these sites are very small. They don't have a lot of pull, and they just have to use whatever they have. So that's something to keep in mind. And some websites will even... Um, display a message saying, we've detected you have a pop-up blocker enabled. Um, in order for us to earn money, please enable your pop-up blocker. Some sites will just show you that as just a courtesy, but still let you view the content, while some will actually lock you out of the content until you allow those third-party ads to show up. So it's all dependent on how much you trust the site um, and you know how uh, bad the ads are. And it's completely up to you. Um, also, um, if you block some of these plugins, uh, you may make these websites unusable. Some of these websites use these third-party plugins to um, display the content in a certain way or uh, allow access to menus on the website. Um, it's becoming less of an issue now with HTML5, but I know with a lot of sites that use Flash, if you block the Flash plugin, um, a lot of the site... They'll basically just break the site. So we don't want that. So let's talk a little bit about the ethics of blocking third-party content. So um, one of the things we need to really talk about is the uh, business model on websites. So um, it actually costs money to um, host a website. It's not free. So in order to generate money for these, uh, for the company that's hosting the websites, um, whoever that may be, um, they will actually put, they will uh, enter in a, an agreement with a, um, an ad service. The ad service will deliver ads, and based on the number of um, views of those ads or the number of times that the ad server, um, you know, um, these ads generate hits, it will actually earn money for the website and that keeps them in business. Now, not all websites use this model. Um, this might be a supplemental model. Some websites have maybe a different model, especially if it's a website for a brick and mortar site. Um, but that's something to consider when you block these ads. So something to keep in mind. So blocking third-party content should be one level of uh, a defense in depth strategy, like uh, the dragon I keep coming back to. Um, not blocking ads, or I'm sorry, third party content, um, leaves you vulnerable. Um, but again, you know, only blocking ads will leave you even more vulnerable because, you know, this isn't the only um, attack vector that's available. There are several other ones. So you want to make sure that you include this as a defense in depth strategy. So I want to thank you all for watching. If you have any uh, questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments below and be safe out there.